Um, this is how I press it. <laughs> <laughs> In today's video, we'll be asking ourselves an extremely important question. But what is toxic masculinity? It's fiction. It's fiction. We made it up. We'll be looking at videos from feminist Mona El Tahawi, The Advocate, as well as Campus Reform, where the younger generation seems infuriated at the mere idea of toxic masculinity but can't quite define what it is exactly. At the end of the video, we'll be featuring a new term that you should be learning, and on a side note, quite a lot of you who watch my videos aren't subscribed. That's suspicious. That's weird. So if you like what you see, click that red sub button, give this video a like, and tell me down below in the comments if you are a toxic male. Snuggles. Gender is a universe. All white people benefit from racism. The health problems I have are more age-related than weight-related. You are a white privileged male. That's just a not so you, you have to give me a chance and to respond we'll to that. And we don't To understand toxic masculinity, we first need to realise that this toxic culture is perpetuated by none other than the patriarchy. And who better to explain to us what the patriarchy is than our favourite fierce feminist and author Mona El Tahawi. Or more recently, I use this definition of patriarchy. Now, the kind of the textbook definition is patriarchy is a system of oppressions that privileges male dominance. And that just kind of goes over people's head. So I want them to imagine an octopus. And the head of that octopus is patriarchy. And each one of those tentacles is capitalism, sexism, racism, ableism, ageism, homophobia, transphobia. And depending on where in the world you live, one or, or two or three or four or all eight of those tentacles are working in unison to keep that head of the octopus which is patriarchy, alive. With all these men getting fired and accused of sexual harassment, the phrase toxic masculinity is in the air in everything from sexual assault to mass shootings. But what is toxic masculinity? Masculinity refers to performed behaviors that have been attributed to manhood. Toxic refers to a subset of violent, destructive, or oppressive behaviors performed in an attempt to live up to a mythological idea of masculinity. Think Batman, for example. He's intelligent, self-sacrificing, and dedicated to justice. Great! But some of his behavior is toxic. His aggression, emotional detachment, and misogynistic control over women are all forms of toxic masculinity. We're not saying that men are toxic, but their behavior can be. Everyone is capable of these behaviors. One reason this exists is because we have a problem with the cultural definition of what a real man is. Manhood is framed in opposition to womanhood. So a toxic view of masculinity sees anything feminine as a threat to masculinity. Boys are taught at a young age to be aggressive, competitive, and strong at all costs. We see this played out whenever a boy is bullied for being weak because they were crying or expressing emotion. So toxically masculine behavior occurs when men feel they need to defend or assert this unhealthy idea of masculinity. Well, the Book of Man writes 10 things men can do to end toxic masculinity. You know how to end toxic masculinity? By good men taking action against it now and bringing up our boys to free of its constraints. And yes, this is revolutionary. Number one, speak out. Don't remain silent in the face of it. When the conversation in your male group turns to trying to get in her knickers or... <laughs> or the tits on that, or the persistence wears down the resistance, or someone is told, don't be a p***y, or are you queer? That's not a cue to look the other way. Kill the work in excess, no excuses culture. Don't teach boys that they shouldn't express their emotions. Call out the trolls on Twitter perpetuating toxic thinking. Pay attention to the entertainment boys are consuming. Don't give up on people, including yourself. Boycott toxic leakers. <laughs> not sure what a leaker is. <laughs> Be open with other men. Do nice gestures every day. Realize it is a revolution. In our patriarchal society, masculinity is valued over femininity. Masculine presenting people are encouraged to show domination over women and feminine presenting people. This can be displayed in the form of sexual objectification, possessiveness, and predatory behavior. There is also a dangerous sense of entitlement that comes from the narrative saying that the more masculine you are, the more entitled you are to respect, power, a job, and sex. When women disagree or say no, aggression, anger, or violence can follow because they are denied what is owed to this masculine sense of power. 
Toxic masculinity can also lead to homophobia because the attraction to men is considered feminine and therefore a threat to straight masculinity. Transphobia towards trans women occurs when they are wrongly perceived as men pretending to be women. Trans women, especially trans women of color, are more likely to experience violence, often from the men who date them and feel their straight masculinity was diminished because they were with a man. Trans men also suffer from the perception of diluting masculinity by being women pretending to be men. It can also impact men who date trans people, because other men might shame them for dating a trans person. Hannah Bone for the Daily Press writes, Let your hair down. The presence of toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity suggests that traits like stamina, resilience and ambition belong exclusively to the male gender. Mm. It claims other characteristics, such as self-awareness and empathy, are feminine and therefore unimportant and feeble. These are ideas fully wrapped in gender stereotypes and sexism. Due to the identity boxes that categorise heterosexual men, queer men are subject to an overwhelming list of stereotypes defining how their sexuality should look to others. The traditional gender construct that fuels toxic masculinity makes no space for men to also experiment. It suggests that if men are attracted to both women Women and men, they are simply gay or confused. Society often rejects the concept of bisexual men in its entirety, yet accepts that of women. This is heavily rooted in the hypersexualization of females. Do you think that toxic mas masculinity is a problem that we need to address in society? Uh, in society, I'd say it definitely is something we should address. It's definitely an issue that most of us face in some way or another. I'm actually a women and gender studies minor, so we talk a lot about toxic masculinity in some of my classes. Um, I definitely think it is an issue at large. I've absolutely heard of toxic masculinity, and I do think it's an issue. And I think it's a huge issue that should be addressed. Um, it's a real problem, especially for high school girls, um, as they start to try and like break into the workforce, and there's people just kind of like breaking them down, saying that like it's not good enough because it's usually males. Focusing on it would be worthwhile here for sure. I think we need more ads like this because it brings attention to this uh, very serious uh, topic. People have become more sensitive to it nowadays. How would you define toxic masculinity as a term in your own words? Toxic masculinity, I would define as... There isn't a sort of logic to it. I feel like it's more just strutting your stuff and being manly beyond there being a point to be. I don't really know. The idea that men have to be a certain way, you know, dominant or dominant, physically imposing and all, and to the extent where... <laughs> Jeff Runer, in an article for the Houston Press entitled Five Things Men Do That Are An Embarrassment To Our Gender, he writes that it's why guys respond to threats with chest beating, cartoonish tough guy nonsense. It's why we won't buy freaking butt wipes unless we can prove it's not taking points off our man score. This status is marketed to us for the same reason and in largely the same manner that the beauty industry markets to women. Fear of rejection by the group, of a perceived gendered <clears throat> humiliation by straying from artificial norms is an effective way to separate people from their money. And, my fellow men, it has got to stop. It just has to. You're not less of a man for being a stay-at-home dad, or for using luxury bath products, or for crying over a movie, or even for just sitting next to another man comfortably in a movie theatre. This toxic masculinity culture and the fragility that results are rubbing us of so much. We can't even touch each other anymore. <laughs> It's keeping us out of growth industries as our traditional occupations wither and die. It's preventing working dads from being with their newborn children. I often get asked why I'm a feminist, with the follow-up usually being an accusation that I'm in it for because, again, toxic goddamn masculinity. I'm in that scene because I honestly care about equality, but I'm also in it because feminists are the ones trying to purge harmful gender <laughs> stereotypes that affect everyone. They want to tear up the man card and all the weight it carries with it. Being beholden is to making us weak and sad and scared and ridiculous. We've got to change. Toxic masculinity could be, like, really anything. Um, anything that, like, puts men over f females um i guess maybe i would say just guys being expected to behave a certain way and Ooh, that's a tough question i would say maybe the persistent reinforcement that like being a man means a certain thing um i guess just kind of the societal ideas of what it means to be masculine has kind of um 
it's kind of become something so large that it's become very toxic. Terms you should be learning. Xenogender. Xenogenders are non-binary gender identities that can best be described with how they relate to things or beings that most people don't think of as having to do with gender, such as animals, plants, things, or concepts. They are not related to masculinity, femininity, neutrality, or terms commonly used to describe gender. It is sometimes described as any gender that cannot be contained by human understandings of gender. People who identify as xenogender may call themselves xenic. When xenic people talk about their gender experiences, they often find that there aren't any words for their experiences. This is called a lexical gap. In order to fill that gap, Xenogender people often use metaphors to compare their gender to things that are understood. The term xenogender is used as an umbrella term for any non-binary gender that is primarily defined by characteristics with no relation to female, male, neutral or other terms traditionally used for human genders. When described, xenogenders often fall into one of three categories, nouns and archetypes. Instead of saying how one's gender relates to masculinity and femininity, one says their gender is, or is like, a kind of animal, an imaginary being, a part of nature, an abstract concept, or a symbol. These types of genders are sometimes called noun genders. Synesthetic perceptions. When a gender is described using things like texture, size, shape, time, light, sound, or other sensory characteristics, these can often overlap with noun genders. They are sometimes called aesthetic genders. Neurodiversity. When one's mental illnesses, neurological conditions, or neurodivergence are an inseparable part of their gender identity, these are called neurogenders. Well, if you enjoyed this video, then why not watch my previous video here? Or you can click here to access the complete playlist that will tickle your senses and arouse you for hours.